Hello and welcome to Urban Sketching with a Fountain Pen. Originally I was going to do this as a sort of line and wash tutorial but then I thought there's something really appealing about doing urban sketching with such minimal instruments. All you need to do is take a pen, find a bit of water somewhere and a brush and a sketchbook and you're good to go. So I really want to promote this technique as a really good entryway to get into urban sketching. So if you're a beginner and you have any questions please just put them in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them. So enjoy the tutorial. I'm going to be using a water soluble ink and I'm going to be applying it with a fountain pen and then as part of the process I'm going to be using some water to sort of paint in and the ink is going to dissolve around and do some fun things. So with a drawing like this it is quite hard in the sense because we have a lot of detail. We've got some interesting perspective. We have a clear vanishing point in terms of perspective for the fence and then the barn is essentially a sort of box with a chamfered off top end. The barn on the in the centre with the silo is a sort of semicircle. I think it's a crook barn, uh, so it's a sort of gothic arch. And then the silo itself is is effectively uh, a tube with a dome top on. Okay, so if you imagine that this is the the bounds of the the reference image. Uh, which I couldn't just drop over there now. If you see how far up the uh, the fence starts, that's there. And then if you imagine it climbs up and it's roughly halfway between the top and the bottom um, to get to the top of the fence. So that would be, that's the bit at the back of there. That's the top of that post. And then a little bit further back, staying in line with there we have a second post there and then we come back and there's three three clear so that's the fence there so i'm going to guesstimate there's an upright there and an upright there so the first line i'm going to put in is really the top of that fence line okay so i know that the vanishing point is roughly over here so what I can do is I can put in the vanishing point that's like there and then follow that line back and sketch it in my mind so I come to the bottom of this sort of here and then here and then if you look at the reference image again I'll put it on there it really is about there it's about here where the bottom of the fence comes down. It's not in the middle. It's a little bit further back. So we're going to go from there. So it's more than we thought in terms of perspective. And that's going to come up and then do some lines in there. Right. Okay, so these are all verticals, these fence posts here. I am starting with the foreground because uh, it's a lot easier particularly when you're putting things behind these sort of components that you're drawing here. Okay. So I'm going to put this upright in here and now we've got some plants here. Now it, sometimes it's a, a bit of a necessity to make leaves on plants bigger than they seem. And this is because with this technique, there isn't a great deal of detail that you can actually put in okay it doesn't matter if it's a bit wonky i mean it's a farm fence no one's sort of keeping track of those kind of things uh, there's a few sort of splits in this so i'm just gonna try and show a bit of that detail okay so we're here we have Put that line in there. See, it's all a bit rough and ready, this. I'm not being too precious. Sometimes it's quite nice to sketch quite fast and it, it really just stops you being overly concerned. 
about sort of details and things you, you just sort of whiz along okay so that's that post there so then okay so as you can see here I've perhaps already made a little mistake because I've messed up the spacing of those planks but I'm not going to worry too much about that I'm just going to carry on sketching because I'm having a great time so I hope you've got some music on and I hope you've got a nice drink I've got a cup of tea and Nora Jones is whispering lullabies in my ear which is very pleasant. And the kids are in bed. Okay. So again, not very accurately drawn this. Not forgetting we've got some there so there's actually four four bits to this um, so if I wanted to find the distance it would be splitting that into quarters and then I'd do the same at this side so if I imagine that that would be the middle the middle in the middle of there so I've gone into the middle of those two and then the middle of those again so that gives me these lines so I know that I'm going to just roughly sketch in the sort of width of these planks here so vaguely like that so again I'm not going to pay too much attention to super accuracy Now, I'm going to have to make some differentiation between, uh, I'm going to follow those lines there. Have I screwed that up? I have, haven't I? So that's the top. Yeah, I've screwed that up. Anyway, that's the top there. And that's the bottom. It doesn't matter. Right. Okay. It's going to be a bit of a weird fence, this, guys, just to warn you. So I think what I've done is I've actually followed that line there. That should be a gap. And then that line there, but it jumps down. Um, so I might just put in a little bit of sort of wood detail in some of these. Using the back actually might work. Uh, So it's all over the place, this fence. Well, we're here to model craziness and not worry too much about details, so we're not going to worry too much about details here. So this following this line across this is this five bar gate or Fibayat as it's called in Cumbria 
and there's loads of grasses and stuff here so I'm trying to show a bit of it and now we're getting a bit further back probably want to be a bit more abstract in sort of tree shapes instead of trying to draw every every um, single leaf or detail so there's a bush there Let's, uh, and then after it goes there it heads off in this distance here and that runs that way and then there's a another little gate thing there and the barn is in this space so let's get that barn in and that's gonna come to there I've got some lovely little window details let's just put some hint of the boards in there like that it's an interesting roof shape this there's a little bit of perspective in it so I might just slightly exaggerate that and then we're coming down again this size and then perspective is going to go down to there now there's a lot of foliage on that roof okay let's put this detail again I'm not going to put every single strip in a flashing There, okay. Okay. So we've got some ivy or creeper or something on here. So again, I'm using a slightly sort of continuous line type technique here. Now this is going to be in shadow. If you look where it is, actually, uh, okay, and there's some foliage there. Now I don't know what's happening here, but I'm going to make something up. I'm going to put in a little fence like that right so we've got all sorts going off back here so I know that th that barn is about a quarter of the way across and it's about the same distance as from there to there again but lower because it goes up and then comes out so I'm going to put a dot in for the side of the barn I'm not going to bother with that silo or whatever the green thing is there and I know that the silo thing is going to be about there and that's going to go vertically to probably sort of there but it doesn't matter the ratio of that is not important really so this bit is going to go to maybe there and 
and there is a uh, roof line on this. I'm going to put a door in because I think it helps to tell the story. And on the roof, there's going to be. Oh, you could just see in the pictures some little bits there. Right. So this silo is interesting because it it obviously eye line is about here. So that's where your flat perspective is. And at the top, if you look, it's like that. Now this is the way cylinders work. As you get as they get higher, they become circles until eventually they're fully circular. If you were looking up at a um a hula hoop or something and it was in the sky. If it was far enough up, it would be a circle. But once it comes down to eye level, it becomes a line. And again, we can exaggerate these things to try and tell the story in a picture. So all the lines are going to come from the middle. Like that. So I'm just going to make it a little bit flatter as I come down. There we go. There is some kind of detail there. So then this roof, oops, this roof is going to come back behind there. Now I've that should be a straight line, and it's not. Oops. No matter. So we need to put in some lines to try and tell the story of the form of this roof. There we go. And here we have some sort of clapperboard and then another section here I'm not quite sure what that's all about but I presume it's, it's a bit of wall or something and I'm missing out that green thing whatever it is a garage or something okay there's a little bit more detail I can put in here just to try and Explain what's happening. Right, so we know the tree line is sort of there. And there's a couple of big trees and then there's a gap. And then we're here. So, looking at the shape of those trees there, we have some pines. So what I'm going to do is just put a few vertical lines in. And I'm going to think about the shape of the tops. Now, probably being a little bit too rugged here, <laughs> a little bit too much, but I'm trying not to be too precious. I might do a bit more of a suggestion of a a pine tree. Go. 
So just this uh, bit back here and then we're going to have a look at what we've got and think about how we're going to colour it. Yeah, in terms of sort of values, um, the obvious story for me really here, I'm going to put a bit more in here. Because I can I probably add a little bit of shadow in there. Is we've got some shadow here, and we've got some shadow down here. Uh, there is a tiny bit of shadow on the back of the barn, particularly here actually. And it's quite dark under the trees. So I mean I can add in a little bit here because we're going to put a lot more ink on there. And then what I'll do is I'll add a bit more ink in these shadowy areas on the barn. I do have quite a lot in there as it is. And actually, let's put a little bit on the back of the silo because that's 3D as well, isn't it? So in terms of these shapes here, you probably want to try and keep telling that perspective story here. And then here we've got these amazing shadows. So let's see what we can do with these. So we've got, if you look again at the, if I drop that on top, the shadow starts about there and it ends up there and there's a shadow here for that tree so and they just assume if the sun's coming from over here that all these horizontals are going to give sorry verticals are going to give horizontal shadows so we can just go at sort of 90 degrees uh, And then we just need to connect those up. Now, obviously, they're not going to correspond to this fence that we've I've done all wrong. But I mean, we'll do what we can, eh? There we go. And just a suggestion of some stuff there, right? So the last thing we're going to do, the standard isn't it, last thing, as if is I'll probably end up putting a lot of this detail back in I think because this is going to be dark this bit. Okay, let's put this here. So again I'm going to start in the foreground and work back and try and figure out exactly what went wrong with this. fence so obviously this is water soluble ink uh you could pretty much use any brand it really doesn't matter parker sort of quink i think this is actually coeco it's their turquoise i believe from when i used to use uh no not coeco it's lamy I used to sketch a lot with Lamy Safari pens. They're very good, very cheap. Um, now this is a new pad. I've not used these before. This is a new pad from a British manufacturer called Pink Pig. It was sent to me to review. So I guess I should put by promotion in the uh, description. They're a really nice looking pad. It'd be interesting to see how it handles this. Uh, like I said, this is the first time I've used it, so no pressure. <laughs> Little pad. Okay. So obviously you can see a lot of that detail's disappeared because it's been washed in. 
but no need to worry about that. I'm going to leave some of these plants so we can read them as uh, detailed, you know. We don't want to just mush all that in, otherwise we'll lose all those lovely leaves. So we'll go between them. Adds a bit of interest in the foreground too. Okay. You can actually pick up a little bit of that ink from places where it's gone a bit dark, like there. If that looks a bit too dark, you can move it about. Very smooth paper this, so it's not going to do a lot of uh, interesting dry brush stuff. But for sort of mixed media, that's probably not a bad thing. Right. So before I even start painting in here, I'm going to add some some line work because I know I'm going to need that in there. I can already envisage I want that. To stand out, so I don't mind that being a bit wet. So the secret here is to not paint over that fence, because you'll lose that layering. Right, steady, steady. Okay, and there's a shadow that runs all the way back here. Actually, there we go. Now you see this bit here where it's starting to cauliflower up. I don't actually want to leave a lot of that. Um, I'm going to try and just diffuse it a little bit. Although it's quite interesting. Okay. And that add in that other bit there. Right. So the next bit. I'm going to use quite a dry brush for this because I don't want to move the paint around too much and get it too dark. When you're doing using this technique, the more you work it, like go again and again and again and again, brush, 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 brush. And the more water you put on and work and work it, the more you're going to remove those line details. So if you want to do a wash that's a little bit lighter and a bit paler, the quickest way is to use dry your brush a little bit and then be quick. There's a lot of ink here, so this is going to be quite dark. There we go. Right, we've got some shadows here, like under here. I'll take a bit of that ink actually. There we go. And then in those windows, some dark. Let's have a look at how that's actually looking up there. Oh, it's looking okay. So again, there's a little bit of shadow detail on this side. We want to tell the story and the shape in these barns. Uh, there we go. And we can leave that gate a little bit. That's it, unpainted. That's looking nice. And then again here. That's it. So really, that's probably fine for that. Um, and then this really dark bit in here. Again, this detail, these broken shadows, lots of different bits and bobs. So, it'd be a bit... And you've got... You can just dab some detail in. Put some splashes in. Pick a bit of that, splash it in. And there we go. So again, if I find a bit here, dab in some detail. And 
And again, maybe some splashes in the foreground here. Looks nice. Pick up a bit more ink. There we go. I might just put a tiny bit more detail in some of these trees just so that the barn actually stands out against them. It helps to frame the the barn a bit. Barn a bit. There we go. Okay, that's enough ink work. How do you think that's looking? I think the components are there. I definitely think uh, I'm going to let that dry for a bit. And then I'm going to go back in and add a little bit of ink work to finish. But I don't think it's far off. Yeah, that's worked out really well. I just want to do now is go back in and reinforce some of these line widths. And maybe put in a bit more detail. Some of the stuff here has got a little bit lost now. Differentiation between some of these components. So again, I'm just reinstating a little bit of that sort of woody detail. Uh, uh, this is all very freestyle -y. If you, I want this to read as if it's running behind that one. So it's important that I actually create some lines that come from behind there. They don't just run up and stop like that. They have to come from there and then continue through. So here, for example, that is just a flat space, but it helps you read the, the shapes properly. Okay, so what have we got here? This thick line. And then we've got this wants to be a thick line here because I really want this to pop off the page. It's not very flexy nib this. This is an old Parker pen that belonged to my lovely late mum. Uh, she was actually rather punctual, but very dead. Right, sorry. <laughs> okay. And then we're reinstigating this fence, which is probably like foreground, quite an interesting, important part of there we go. All right, that <clears throat> I'm gonna let's just I might actually put in some more plant details. Why not? We could even put some behind here to sort of suggest that it's a 3D sort of thing and not just 2D. There we go, like that. So that's done. I don't need to do much on there. Uh, maybe just a little bit that just so. This has been lost a bit here, hasn't it? This bush. And I can add in the top line of that fence. I don't necessarily want to put the whole thing in because I think it would be too heavy. Um, uh, we'll put in a sort of hint of some trunks. But this barn, I want to try and make a little bit more prominent. It's quite important, this. I 
because uh, in many ways it's the sort of focal point, if you will. Right. Now this is a hole, isn't it? It's just a black hole. You can see the paper is still a tiny bit. Still a tiny bit. There, so I think my uh, sound situation is looking pretty critical. I think my record is about to go, so hurry up, hurry up Jackson, hurry up. Put in some of this foliage and then the shuttering on the barn. And then here we have the bottom of the roof line. And I think there is a gutter as well. Let's put a double line in. And there we go. Now, that's sort of defined. I think what I might do is do a shadow like that, which suggests a bit of a shadow and a window frame. Cool. So finally, it's just these bits here. So I'll sketch those in. Again, any opportunity just to put a little bit of detail in. Always helps to tell the story. This probably should be one of the thicker lines here. <laughs> and this is going to be mad, this, so I'm going to actually make this a, a bush. And here, there is a door. Uh, come in. So that's pretty much it actually. So yeah, as you can see, it's pretty easy in terms of layering that time. It was just a uh, pen and then some water and then another chip with the pen again. Now you could make it more complicated and do some sky detail. Or... The whole point of this process is it's quite fast. It's not fussy, it's not precious, and it's so simple. Um, now, please feel free to leave any um, comments. I'd like to know what you think of the process, what you think of the results. Uh, if you'd like any, me to uh, tackle anything else on this channel, let me know. Uh, I've got some originals for sale on my website. Pretty cheap. And um, yeah, I'll keep producing stuff, seeing if people like it. And hopefully you can learn something. Uh, and I just love to draw. Uh, and any opportunity to sort of impassioned people and to try and treat themselves because that's what this is this is a sort of opportunity for you to sit down and be kind to yourself and create something and go that's cool today's been a good day
today. It's been a good day. So thanks for being here. See you soon. Bye.